Lenovo owned Motorola has had some hits and misses with the Moto G series over the last couple of years. While the company has been banking on its clean stock Android aesthetic to woo customers, the presence of powerful rivals has made users gravitate towards other options. With the newly launched Moto G31, Motorola is looking to change that, banking on the phone's solid specs such as the 50MP camera and an AMOLED screen. But is it enough? We answer this question in our review. Compared to the Moto G30 from last year, the Moto G31 feels like a massive improvement in some places. The body is still a plastic unibody construction, but now the materials feel a tad bit more robust, which adds greatly to the overall fit and finish. The textured pattern on the back also aids in gripping the phone more comfortably. The attention to detail is also good, with elegant-looking rear cameras and the buttons having good tactile feedback. Top that with the pretty dark color gradient that changes colors from maroon to blue hues depending on the light and the Moto G31 is an attractive phone with a universal appeal. And despite packing a huge battery, the phone is surprisingly lightweight and slim. It even has an IPX2 rating for water resistance, but it is a downgrade in comparison with the Moto G30 that had an IP52 rating for dust and water resistance. Another thing that we're not fans of is the volume rockers on the side that are a little too hard to reach and so is the dedicated Google Assistant button. The Moto dimple on the back acts as a fingerprint sensor which is clever and nicely integrated. A staple for any budget phone, the Moto G31 comes with a 3.5mm headphone jack which sits at the top. You also get a hybrid dual SIM setup with space for two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and a micro SD card slot. Although we do wish that we had the option for both and didn't have to choose. But the highlight of the Moto G31 is its big 6.4-inch AMOLED display, which is becoming common for smartphones in this price segment. Being an AMOLED display, content looks good with deep blacks and live contrasty colors. However, the screen is capped at 60Hz, which might seem to be a downgrade compared to the G30's 90Hz panel. The output from the single speaker is also mediocre at best. It sounds muffled and tinny, but you do get Dolby Atmos support. In terms of performance, Motorola has opted for a MediaTek G85 chipset which is paired with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. There is a 6GB version as well which might be useful for those who want to future-proof their phones. In terms of real-world usage, the Moto G31 was adequately fast and smooth. The MediaTek G85 chipset is no slouch, but it's not very powerful either. While the general usage was smooth enough, we did notice some minor stutters while gaming and scrolling. Software is one of the strengths of the Moto G31. It comes with Android 11 installed out of the box and despite offering an almost stock Android experience, Motorola has included several customization options without breaking the user experience. The Moto G31 comes with a triple camera setup with a 50MP primary camera, an 8MP wide-angle camera and a 2MP macro camera. Images from the primary sensor during daylight are clear and sharp but the colors are a bit too saturated as per our liking and the dynamic range is not the best. The ultra wide does a good job of getting more in the frame but there is a major color shift and the sharpness also takes a hit. The 2MP macro sensor is a good addition for getting close-ups of subjects. On the front you get a 13MP selfie camera which does a good job of producing reasonable skin tones. The phone is powered by a 5000 mAh battery and supports 20 watt of fast charging. It lasted us an entire day easily with moderate gaming, streaming, messaging and calls. Priced at 12,999 rupees, the Moto G31 is a good option if you're looking for a budget smartphone without ads and bloatware. It adds a great AMOLED display and decent cameras, but also at the same time it cuts some corners such as the high refresh rate screen and IP rating that the previous Moto G30 had. Overall, it is a nice alternative for people considering the Redmi 9 Prime.